Um, let me also say a few words on Greece. Indeed, a historic moment um, for everybody who has been around from the beginning. And I joined the group in mid-2010, so eight years now. Um, a lot has happened during this period. So we had dramatic nights, and I think many of you um, who come here when we finish the meetings had dramatic nights, um, particularly during 2010, 2012, um, when the financial stability of the entire euro area was sometimes under threat. Of course, in July 2015, when Greece was really close to leaving monetary union, and if this had happened, it would have had profound implications for Greece, but also for the monetary union as a whole. So we have come a long way. Greece has come a long way. We in the euro area have come a long way. And um, I really want to congratulate Greece on concluding um, this third program. The solidarity um, from the euro area for Greece in exchange for all the reforms and adjustment is unprecedented. It's the biggest solidarity the world has ever seen. We have seen disbursements of 245 billion euro. When I add up the Greek loan facility, EFSF loans and now ESM loans, that's all only the European side and the IMF comes on top of that. And there was debt relief in 2012 not only from the private creditors, but also the official creditors improved the lending terms in 2012, extended the maturities, reduced margins and fees. And when we estimate what all these measures coming from the European creditors have meant for Greece, you find in our annual report that was published today that Greece saved last year in its budget 12 billion euro in debt service payments. That's more than 6.5% of Greek GDP, and this will be repeated every year. So this is um, the biggest support program um, ever. Um, the chairman of the Eurogroup talked about the details of today's um, decision, so we are prepared to disperse 15 billion euro to Greece after national procedures have been completed. Um, 9.5 billion euro will go into a dedicated account for the cash buffer, um, and this will cover post-program financing needs well into the year 2020. The remaining 5.5 billion euro will go to the segregated account to cover immediate debt servicing needs. Um, on the debt relief, you already received the details, um, a further extension of maturities, um, deferral of interest and amortization payments. And this means, um, to put a number to that, that um, interest and amortization on 96.6 billion of EFSF loans will be deferred for another 10 years. So the first time that Greece will make interest and um, amortization payments on this amount will be in 2033. And uh, you find all the other details on that operation in the statement. Um, I welcome that there is a um, serious post-program monitoring arrangement. The uh, Commissioner talked about enhanced surveillance. I think that is appropriate, given the large amount of money that has been dispersed and also the unprecedented debt relief. Therefore, the post-program monitoring is tighter than in the other cases. The ESM will be happy to collaborate closely with the Commission in the context of enhanced surveillance. We have our early warning system, as you know, um, and that will be important as follow-up. On deepening AMU, the other important item today, um, I don't want to say very much, but um, um, I want to emphasize that, or to repeat, to remind everybody that the economic rationale of these different ideas to deepen monetary union 
um, is really to make the euro area more resilient to future crises. We want to reduce risks because there will be another crisis one day, and we want to share risk where it is necessary. And it's in that spirit that I also want to welcome the contribution from Germany and France on deepening EMU. Um, from the discussion tonight, let me highlight only a very few points that are of particular relevance for the ESM, um, without ignoring how important the other elements are on completing banking union, all that is important for more risk sharing. Of course, the, for the ESM, it will be important um, um, the decision to be, provide the backstop for the single resolution fund. It's also important that the ESM toolkit will be reviewed um, and possibly also new um, tools added. Um, the other points were made clear by, by the chairman of the Eurogroup. Um, it will also be important to um, work on the collaboration between the ESM and the European Commission, um, which is working very well. Um, we have demonstrated that in our work on Greece over the last few years. It's all written down in an MOU, which we signed in April in Sofia. But if the ESM gets new mandates, obviously that needs to be reflected in that MOU. So we will look at that once the decisions have been taken. Um, I believe there can be a very good continued division of labor between the ESM and the Commission, also in program design and management. Um, we will look at it from the perspective of a creditor and with a view to market access and debt sustainability. Obviously, we all will, we must, but we also want to respect the Commission's competences because they are written down in the EU treaty, so there's no attempt from anybody to, um, to intrude into that. Um, of course, we have to remember that all this will take some time anyway on the ESM side because once we have an agreement um, on the different elements to broaden the mandate, the ESM treaty needs to be changed. Um, that requires ratification in 19 parliaments, all parliaments of our member states, and that will take as a minimum one year, I would expect. Let me end here.